Welcome to Earth Juice. Coming up this week, new dinosaurs discovered in Canada, Arctic foxes in decline, and bat tongues in high speed. Paleontologists from the University of Toronto have unveiled a new dinosaur, which they say is the oldest of its type in North America. Acrotholus ordeti was a member of the Pachycephalosaur family, herbivores with bony domed heads, and researchers fossil hunting in Milk Ridge, Alberta, reported this new find in the Journal of Nature Communications. Announcing that they had found two fossilized skull caps, Dr. David Evans from the Royal Ontario Museum explained that these fossils provide a wealth of new information on the evolution of these dinosaurs. Weighing in at around 40 kilograms or 90 pounds, this new species was about the size of a Labrador. It walked on its hind legs and had a skull around 10 centimeters thick. Scientists predict that this peculiar dome-shaped head was probably either decorative or used to headbutt other dinosaurs in confrontations. It roamed Alberta around 85 million years ago, five million years before the last known example of Pachycephalosaur. Little is known about small dinosaurs in this part of the world, and the incomplete fossil record raises the exciting possibility that there are many more small dinosaurs just waiting to be discovered. Scientists previously thought that the decline in Arctic foxes could be linked to infections, but new research has shown that those foxes specialized in hunting on marine prey are being exposed to dangerous levels of a poisonous substance. When a team from the Leibniz Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research in Berlin examined hair from foxes and samples from their food, they found significant traces of mercury. Publishing their data in the journal PLOS One, the team found that the levels of the chemical element varied in Arctic foxes living in different habitats. On the Russian island of Medny in the North Pacific, the foxes survive almost exclusively on seabirds and have high levels of mercury in their systems. Their Icelandic cousins, on the other hand, live inland and survive on non-marine mammals and birds, and they show much lower levels of the metal. Scientists say that these findings raise worrying concerns about water contamination and pollution, and that the increasingly high levels of mercury found in the marine food chain warrants further research before more species become threatened. And finally, by using a high-speed camera, biologists at Brown University in Rhode Island, USA have revealed how nectar-feeding bats lap up the fluid as they hover like hummingbirds. Filming at 500 frames per second, the scientists worked out that each dip of the tongue took just one-tenth of a second. But not only did they capture this rare sight, they also filmed the tiny hair-like structures which cover the tongue and which help to soak up as much of the fluid as possible. As the tongue extends, blood is pumped into more than 500 of these hairs or papillae, making them enlarge within 40 milliseconds. And as co-author Elizabeth Brainerd added, it's a bit like the difference between sticking a broom handle into some liquid or a mop. Lead author Callie Harper hopes that the team's findings will eventually help to improve surgical technologies, suggesting that the bat's tongue could be used to design modified endoscopes, helping doctors to better see the insides of people. That's this week's juice. There was, however, one more amazing story about robotic insects the size of a penny. Hank over at SciShow covered that, so make sure you go and check out his channel to see what that's all about. And after our slow-mo bats today, make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged because we've got a slow-mo hummingbird special coming your way. Thanks for watching. Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences say that they had succeeded in making a bionic fly. It's a bug-sized robot with flapping wings that can hover in place and perform controlled maneuvers much like a housefly. Hello and welcome to Zoo La La. So why is it that bats don't get dizzy upside down?